I started ARC um, because I was working with youth in the juvenile hall, um, some of whom were being sentenced to life and getting decades in prison, uh, and some who were coming home. And for the ones that were coming home, uh, there were very few like reentry services uh, and supportive communities and families to help them return home um, with a real chance of having a great life. ARC is unique in the sense that the continuum of care is something that, that we've organically created. So the Hope and Redemption team that's now in all prisons are credible messenger mentors that are in many juvenile halls in, in uh, the Department of Juvenile Justice. Uh, as we connect with people that are incarcerated, they then connect with our services on the outside, housing, therapy, careers, a community that you can belong to. And so you start from the inside, preparing to come home, and then you have family or a community on the outside that continues to assist you and guide you into your transition from incarceration to freedom. And so what set ARC apart is they brought elected officials into our neighborhoods. They brought um, big funders and individuals that said they cared about this into the jails. And they really, as a result, started to change hearts. I think the largest policies that ARC has impacted are the various bills just getting people home out of prison. So the various parole bills, SB 260, 261, SB 9, Senate Bill 394, um, these are the bills literally pulling people out of the system. Everyone knows that we need to look at another path away from just you know housing people in non-rehabilitative prisons and look at people as human beings and get them back into society for both for society's well-being but also for their own individual well-being. So I'm very optimistic about ARC. When we really look at what ARC has been doing, we've been doing re-entry in the innovative way that now is seen as like the way to do it. So finding support is what ARC is all about. Being in the community where people understand you and are able to coach you and are able to provide the tools for you to cope and to find, again, the purpose that you want in your life as you're coming home. What makes ARC special is that they're in the business of giving individuals second chances when society will not give them a second chance. And we have a lot of success stories, a lot of success stories. I have guided so many people um, to this organization and um, by working with them, by giving them the resources, I have seen them go so far in life. ARC is doing the hard work. Our members are going back into the prisons. They're educating those that are incarcerated currently. They're providing hope. They're providing skills and they're providing a pathway out that could be productive. And it's through those pathways and through that education that our members come to ARC, they get housing, they get mental health and wellness counselors, they get to join cohorts and to get trained as firefighters, as union workers, as electricians. Um, this is the way it should be. Uh, we want to know that those that are incarcerated now, that when they get out, they're gonna have something to look forward to, that they're gonna have something to do. And with more funding and more programming, um, I, I think it makes our community safer. In fact, I know it makes our community safer. For me, having the second chance means that, you know, it's a, it's a redemption. You know, it's, it's a comeback story. And it's allowed me to be able to make amends that's really what it's all about because you know i have victims through my crime and and it caused a lot of pain a lot of damage you know some of that damage that can't be undone and by being able to have this opportunity to work in this field in this career it's come full circle and it's allowed me to make amends through a career that I choose to do every day. Now I get to be on the other side helping, helping out and being the one to save lives and to be there for somebody on their worst day. And so with all that, it's almost like it's a, a living amends. So my life 
is dedicated to my victims and to honor them and their family. It's helped me develop into who I am today. Um, and I don't think I would have ever taken ownership in, to that degree um, and, and wear it like I do today had it not been for, for an organization like ARC and the, the support system that comes with it. ARC has really showed me that sky, the sky's the limit in terms of uh, what, what I can accomplish and what I put my mind to. Nowhere else have I ever met a community like ARC has. Uh, we all relate to each other based off of our lived experience. Um, and we need, we need some group to come home to. Like we need something to identify with. A lot of times our old communities are unhealthy. Uh, they contributed to us landing in the position that we landed in. And so when we come home, <clears throat> now we have this new family, this new community that we're able to get involved in. It's just that, that it's gonna help you do exactly what you wanna do as long as you put your effort into though. You have to really want it, because it, it's not necessarily a handout. I mean, they're gonna help you as long as you put your 50, they'll put their 50, and they could help you do just that. Provide for your family, get a career, um, be successful and just live a better life for yourself. It's just working with folks um, that are formerly incarcerated, it's just, it's just a very unique set of people. Um, everything from hardworking to just having the biggest hearts that you will ever know. And um, I always tell people that ARC members have taught me so much more than I could ever possibly teach them. You should donate to ARC because we're accountable for the money that you donate and we can be trusted to use those funds exactly how we say we're going to use them. To choose hope uh, over fear, over anger is something that, you know, I don't think a lot of us can really even fathom, but there are people standing up every single day who are choosing hope and forgiveness over fear. When you see a kid that didn't have a first chance, that ate out of a trash can, that stole from a convenience store and a knocked and then knocked down the owner just trying to get away and that kid goes away for robbery, that's the system that's failed that kid. And so what drives me is seeing children in cages. Uh, our system should do better by our future. And our future is our children.